Hello, and welcome to my latest course at the Raw Code Academy. This is Pertena in Production. I want to say thank you to Neil and his team at Pertena for kindly sponsoring my time to produce this course. So what will this course entail? Over the next few weeks, we will be diving in to how to run Pertena in Production to manage real production workloads. We'll be taking a look at some interesting features of Patina, such as fleet management and GitOps, ditching Kubernetes, for simpler orchestrators like Nomad and Swarm, multi-cluster management, securing your workloads, and even a live hacking experiment where I attempt to add OCI registry support to enrich the GitOps capabilities of Pertina. I hope you are as excited as I am for this Pertainer in Production course. Today, we start with our first tutorial, which is to take an existing Pertainer installation and look at the different ways to manage the X509 TLS certificates. Let's have some fun. So when you install Pertainer for the first time, you're presented with this screen. This is a vanilla EC2 box running on AWS with a Docker installation of Pertainer. By default, TLS runs on 9443 and Pertainer is very kind. It generates some self-signed certificates so that you can get started right away in a secure fashion. But of course, as we all know, with self-signed certificates, our browsers can't verify or trust the root. So you'll often be presented with this screen which says your connection is not private. Now of course we can click on advanced and say proceed. And this is enough for most. Of course we can improve this situation. In 2022 we have access to Let's Encrypt. We have free TLS certificates all day long. So in this session, we're going to take a look at how we can use CertBot on the host to provision the X509s and have Portana mount them in to the Docker container to replace the self-signed certificates. But that still requires a little bit of manual work. So we're going to take a look at a second option too, which is to run a reverse proxy in front of Portana, which can handle the Let's Encrypt negotiation, the Let's Encrypt dance for you. And for this, we'll be taking a look at Caddy. Now, there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to using either of these methods. If you are happy and comfortable with Pertena still sign certificates, then go nuts. If you don't mind doing a little bit of plumbing and running CertBot on your host, fine by me. And if you want to take the extra step and configure a reverse proxy that manages the Acme dance for you, then so be it. So let's take a look at the different ways to manage our X509s for Pertina. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is the settings page. From the Pertina homepage, if you click on settings and scroll down, you will see the SSL certificate settings. If you really want an extended validation certificate, an EV cert, and you want to go and pay 500 bucks, this is where you upload it. You select file for the private key and the certificate and you're good to go. Regardless of which TLS method you use with your Portana, I'm going to recommend that you tick the force HTTPS only box and apply. You don't really want to expose any web service in this day and age over regular HTTP. So let's practice good hygiene and secure it. Perfect. Okay. Now that we have Portana running with the still sign certificate and we are enforcing HTTPS mode, we can look at alternative ways to get our own X509 certificates into this setup. The first way that I want to show you is using CertBot. If you're not familiar with CertBot, it is a piece of software from the team at Let's Encrypt uh, that speaks the ACME protocol to the Let's Encrypt servers and issues certificates. To run CertBot on Ubuntu is relatively easy. 
It's delivered as a Snap application, and Snap is available on all Ubuntu machines. So first, we run Snap install core. We then do a Snap refresh core. This will update the Snap package list, allowing us to install the latest version of Certbot. Next, we run Snap install Certbot. Only we're going to pass the dash dash classic flag. Dash dash classic just means that we're going to run Certbot with access to the host and no C groups or namespace constraints. We then make sure that Certbot is available as a system command on the regular path by moving it or creating a symbolic link to user bin. Next, we run Certbot, Cert only, standalone. What does this mean? Well, it means it's going to run its own web server on the host because the way the ACME protocol works, if you want a certificate for a domain, it must be able to reach that server on that domain on port 80, where it will respond with a key to confirm that you actually have access and the ability to provision certificates for that domain. It's a proof of ownership, or at least administration. This is an interactive command, and when we run it, it's going to ask us for our email address and the domain that we wish to provision the certificate for. Now, we want to be able to automate the renewal of these certificates, and we don't want to have to have any manual intervention. So we're going to use systemd timers with a systemd service to make sure that once a month, the certificate is checked to see if it's going to expire. Here we create a certbot timer, which is going to run the certbot service on the first day of every month at quarter past three in the morning. Then we have a certbot service, which runs certbot renew. Simple. We do a daemon reload and enable our timer. Now, don't worry about pausing and copying or typing everything that you've seen in that file there. The code is available at github.com slash rawcodeacademy slash pertainer dash in dash production. The link is there. So let's run our certbot script. First, it asks for email address. I'll enter david at rawcode.com. Yes, I agree to the terms. Yes, I'll share my email address. And now it's asking for the domain that we wish to secure. I'm going to enter p.rawcode.academy because that is the DNS that I have configured for this machine running our pertainer instance. Let's encrypt is now running a web server on this machine on port 80, sending a request looking for a file available over HTTP that confirms that I have administration's right to this domain. As you can see, it successfully created our certificate in the slash etc slash let's encrypt slash live folder, meaning this is a real production let's encrypt certificate that is now available for Pertainer to use. Now, if you remember in our systemd timer, we have a command configured called certbot renew. I'm got not going to run renew now, so I'm going to pass the dry run flag. But this is the command that will check for the expiration date on your certificates and make sure that if they're close to being expired, they will be renewed for another three months. Also, if you're looking at the commands I've typed and you don't want to run this script in an interactive environment, all of the arguments that I passed, my email address, the domain, and agreeing to the terms can be configured through flags passed to the certbot command. If you run certbot, cert only, dash dash help, everything you need to know is there. So let's configure Pertainer to use these new Let's Encrypt certificates. Also available on the GitHub is a script. So here we have the Docker command with the correct volume mounts to take Let's Encrypt certificates from the host into your Pertainer instance. The two mounts that we worried about, or the two mounts that we are concerned about, are these two here. The ones with etc. Let's encrypt live and etc. Let's encrypt archive. You'll see that we have the term your domain. This is in the middle and end of each of these mount lines. So you can use search and replace to find your domain and replace it with the domain you're running for Tana on. We save. And now we can run our p.le script, which will run Pertainer over 
TLS with Let's Encrypt production certificate. So if we pop over to the browser, hit refresh, click on the lock, you will see our certificate is issued by R3, the Let's Encrypt Authority. Awesome. Now there's not a lot of maintenance with that approach and you can be very successful with Pertino's own self-signed certificates or Let's Encrypt running on a host. But I think my preferred way is to use Caddy as a reverse proxy, which does automatic TLS for you. It speaks Acme to Let's Encrypt and handles all the renewals for you. We don't even need to disable the Pertino self-signed certificate and we can still enforce TLS at all times. It just means that you as the user with a browser speak TLS to Caddy via the Let's Encrypt production certificate. But it also means that Caddy speaks to Pertina over TLS using the self-signed certificate. So we have end-to-end -end TLS encrypted web traffic. So I've created a small script also available on the GitHub page, p-rp.sh. Here you'll see the complete setup for this Pertina configuration. First, I remove all the containers from the host. Maybe don't copy that line. We then create the volume for Pertina, which I've already done as part of the configuration, so it's commented out. We then run Pertina as always, only this time there are no volume mounts for Let's Encrypt certificate. For Caddy, we also need two volumes, Caddy Data and Caddy Config. From there, we can run Caddy, making sure that we bind ports 443 and 80 from the container to the host. Remember, for Let's Encrypt Acne negotiations, we must have physical port 80 available on the host. We also need to link Portena with the name Portena. This means that DNS queries from the Caddy container can query Portena as a DNS name and reach the Portena container. We then have to mount in our caddy file, which I'll show you in just a moment, to slash etc slash caddy slash caddy file. We then mount in the two volumes we created, caddy data and caddy config. And you'll see I'm using the official caddy 2-alpine image. If we take a look at the caddy file, we'll see one, we have to configure our email address. This is because emails are required for ACME negotiations with Let's Encrypt. We then set up a virtual host of p.rockcode.academy. We have a reverse proxy block which says, hey, any request we get on this domain, we're going to proxy to another server. We specify the two, which is going to our Portena on port 993, the encrypted self-signed certificate Portena. Because it's a self-signed certificate, we do have to tell Caddy not to verify the root. So we need a transport block for HTTP, where we say TLS is enabled, however, skip the verification step. And that is it. We can run PRP, which will delete any existing containers, start up the two new containers, and in fact, we can run Docker Container LS. We'll see that we have Caddy and Portina both running. And now if I do a curl with a dash dash V to p.rawcode.academy, we get a whole bunch of text back. This is a good indication that things are working. So let's pop back over to the browser and refresh. And you'll see that we still have a happy lock with a certificate issued by R3 from Let's Encrypt. So that is how you enable and secure your Pertainer instance three ways. One, using their self signed certificates. It works as long as you don't mind clicking accept or advanced on that little warning page, you're good to go. Two, start bot on the host with a systemd timer to handle renewals. And three, reverse proxy with caddy. They're all production grade. They're all good to go. Enjoy. We'll see you next time.